Hello class. Um, I am just doing a uh, part two to the um, the original drawing with value, drawing objects with value video. And this is um, where we left off. I was just showing you how to um, use sighting and measuring to first lay in your composition and then secondly using the vine charcoal to um, to rough in some value um, and then the what happens after this the next phase once you get kind of three or so basic values in light which you put in with your eraser and dark which you initially put in with the vine charcoal and then a medium value once you get those in um, the next step is going to be to um, to go ahead and pick up your charcoal pencil and your eraser and just start um, refining things. Remember at this uh, stage of the game the um, vine charcoal you can easily lift off with your finger. right? And that's actually why we use it. We use it because um, it allows us to feel a little bit freer and to just put stuff down, make mistakes, adjust it, and then what we're left with is, is a drawing or um, sort of like a pre-drawing or an underdrawing where we can then go back and um, make things more permanent with our charcoal pencils and erasers and all that stuff. Okay, so <clears throat> because I haven't mastered time-lapse photography yet, I've been working on this egg drawing um, in between videos. So this is kind of where we left off and this is where <clears throat> this is where I am with it now. Um, I said I wasn't going to draw those wrinkles in the sheet, but I couldn't help myself, so I just went for it. I think that they're a little bit too contrasty. They stand out maybe a little bit too much. Um, so I could possibly work on that with using a blender and an eraser to try to um, try to lift out um, some of that value. Um, so. My reason for doing this was just so that you could see part of this um, process. And now I can't find my charcoal pencils, of course, because I'm exactly set up where I need to be. Um, they're on the floor. All right, let me get the let me get this one here. Um, so I've got this charcoal pencil, um, which is, I believe, a six. B, it's either a 6B or a 4B. Uh, I've got my Mono Zero. Um, okay, here's a 6B. This is this is the one I'll use. All right. Um, also, I keep with me. Somebody had asked earlier in the semester about you know how do you keep things clean, and I, I usually just keep a wet paper towel next to me um, when I'm working for my hands and maybe for the desk or, you know, whatever. Um, but fair warning, don't put this wet paper towel on your drawing to, uh, or confuse it with your dry paper towel because once you put wet, um, once you get your charcoal drawing wet, you will not be able to erase that area. Um, I have made that mistake several times. So, um, so use the, keep the dry paper towel for for then um, for your blending. Um, all right, so where am I on this drawing? I'm trying to remind myself. I think what happened is I was working on it last night, and I added some things in the drapery that aren't really there, which is actually kind of fine. Um, you know, at some point when you're when you're an artist and you are, you get to decide what your drawing is going to be. What you don't want to do is to um, change things and make them unbelievable in some way. Um, what I see, it, looking in the picture, I see that this kind of goes across behind and then it kind of feels like it continues out here. And I think I've missed that a little bit. Maybe this thing, I've drawn it in the wrong place, this little triangle. So some things may be off, but what we want to do is we want to go for realism and believability. If you add a little extra something, it doesn't really matter. Um, this still may not 
have the effect I want, but I'm using my eraser to remember an eraser is, is a drawing tool. It's a very effective, excellent drawing tool. Also, I have with me um, my um, uh, blending stick, and you can also use that once it's dirty without even adding anything. You can put down value with it. So, um, what I'm going to try to do is fix this area over here. And then in, in this area, that's where I added something that wasn't really there, and I'm just trying to fix that. So I'm going to work on those two areas. Um, also, this area over here I'm not super happy with, because this in the photo is such a dark shadow. And I think what happened is there's some reflected light up here that I'm missing that you can see in the photograph. This is the sheet. This is sort of a dark shadow where the sheet is not. So I think that this isn't really working. And you can see the line, which is somewhere right here. And I can take my pen eraser. Don't forget the pen eraser. This thing is, is amazing. Um, and that's kind of how I got some of these highlights in here was with the pen eraser on these folds. Because it's a super tiny, exact um, drawing tool that er, brings you can draw light with, right? All right, so I'm gonna just see if I can fix this. I'm gonna just put a line in here so I can see what this is trying to be. And then it runs into this, it comes across this way, and it connects right about here. So I think, they need to connect here. And then this, maybe I'll make it here. And this comes over that way. And then this area, I feel like um, this area that's the sheet, you can actually see that there's a line there. And that's where it connects here, and then there's that shadow that goes across and comes down. But this, you can also see a line at the edge of that sheet. Um, and any time you have a line, like like this and you want to make it, um, or like that, you can use this, um, these blenders to soften it, or, you know, because you don't want a hard, anytime, like around these eggs, I try to keep an outline around it so that there's definition. But if that outline is too dark or too hard, then it ruins your illusion. So this is kind of ideal right here, where I don't see a harsh line, but there is, um, there's still some, definition, and that's partly because there's a value change in between here and here. So, um, sorry, I keep getting sidetracked by other details. So I'm going to take this and get rid of that eraser line too. And I'm just going to kind of blend it in. And then I think that this value right here, right next to it, just needs to, to be a little bit lighter. And then I can always come back and blend it. Okay. Um, and now, that looks completely different, doesn't it? It's maybe a little bit too light. Now I'm going to just work on it. It's interesting, um, you know, what I said about getting away from your drawings. When I'm doing these videos, I can 
I can look up at the screen and my, my drawing is a lot smaller on the screen so it's the same thing as getting away from the drawing and it's really helpful. Um, so um, if you happen to have a second camera and you're interested in um, oh, you can just use your cell phone actually. Just um, use your your cell phone to take a picture of your the progress of your drawing but I really do recommend just getting up and going across the room and looking at it. And that's kind of back where we were a little bit. There's some reflected light in here too, right, right along here. It's really tricky at this stage. You, what you're doing is you're basically trying to um, just make tweaks, you know, go in and say, well, how, how is the value of one thing compared to what's next to it, compared to the, to the photograph, and going back and trying to fix those things so that they look more realistic and more like the photo. And a lot of it is back and forth, and sometimes you make more mistakes, and that's actually fine. So when I'm looking at this, it is, I think, if I just slightly blend it, it'll look more like the picture because the picture, it's there, but it's very subtle. So that means, what that means is those two values are very close. They're different, but they're close together. So there's not as hard of a line. So see, now I can still see this is lighter, but there's less of a jump. There's less of a hard line. And that really, to me, looks more like the photograph where you can kind of see that there's a little extra um, reflected light in there somewhere. Um, but the thing that I'm not happy with is this sheet, really. Um, so I'll keep working on that. And it has some wrinkles and things, which this uh, is really good for putting in wrinkles. Um, like if I wanted to try to put in something with it that's very subtle, I could put it in, I can smudge it with my finger, I can add, um, I can add a little uh, line underneath, smudge it again, go in with my pen eraser um, and pull out a highlight. So one thing that I, I want you guys to remember is that um, as you go along, <clears throat> Let's say you want to draw these wrinkles in the sheet um, um, or anything like that that you might have in your setup or if you're drawing from this photograph. Um, these wrinkles are essentially little teeny cylinders, right? The same thing as this is a cylinder, this is a cylinder, this is uh, kind of a modified cylinder. Um, so just remember that and it, it in order for it to, to look realistic, it's got to have this highlight here in the middle, okay? And that's what this pen is perfect for. You can also shape your kneaded eraser into um, a very small um, point. Sometimes that works. Not as good as the kneaded as the pencil, but... Um, so it's got to have a highlight. It should have um, a medium value, and it should have a little bit of a dark line in there somewhere. And if the line is too dark, you know, what I've, what I've been doing to get these lines is I'll put a line down with charcoal like I have right here. Let's see, let me, let me do one right here. And I'll put down some of those lines and then I'll come back with this and smudge it. Might even smudge it this way a little bit. And then I can come back and pull out some highlights. So that's a little bit um, too dark. So I can go back again and smudge again and then pull out again. So that's getting to be better. It's still a little dark in there. But do you see how that works? Um, it's all about using this blending stick and using um, your erasers.
that's how we're getting this effect. So these little teeny cylinders that are really just, um, I guess this got sort of messed up in the dryer or something. Some, something caused these, some kind of heat source caused these extreme wrinkles. Um, and I'm losing track of what I'm doing. Okay, so I'm going to leave this here for right now. I think that I like that I was able to get a really small value change in here. And that's what I was seeing in the photograph that was missing from this. Um, I could go back in and put more wrinkles here, but I think I'm going to hold off on that for now because I'm, I'm not sure if I'll like that. Um, just kind of going along here. I want to I wanna work on this area because this area hasn't really been developed yet. And I did notice that it, I wanted it to feel like it continued. So I think that I, it's a little bit higher. If I hold up my stick to the photograph and I hold it so that it's parallel to down here. I think that this is a little bit higher on this side, but I still want it to feel like it has this continuation um, because that's how it, how it feels in the picture to me. Um, so, I'm going to do that. Okay, I'm going to move my board a little bit so I can focus a little bit more. Um, so here, if you look at the picture, you can see I have a pretty hard line here. I just laid it in, um, and if you look at the picture, there's not a hard line there, is there? It's just kind of, it needs to be blended out. And don't, don't panic if when you blend it, it takes away part of your image. There's a kind of push and pull that you can do where you... Use your blender and just go back and forth with the eraser and blender to get a softer edge on something. It's starting to look more like it looks in the picture. There's some kind of a black line here or something. And I can put that in and sometimes I'll use my finger to, to lightly blend when I know that this uh, blending stick is going to put down more charcoal and I don't want charcoal there. But you can also do that with a clean part of your paper towel and make sure that, like I said, that your paper towel is actually dry. And if I put a wet paper towel right here, that will become permanent. That whatever is there, you won't be able to erase it. Um, so just be aware of that. Also. I see a little bit of light that connects here, and I'm looking at the photograph as I'm doing this, and then it comes down, and then there's a darker patch down here. The darker patch goes about, is right here, and then the light starts right about in here. Um, so this is the thing to remember. This is something I talk about a lot in, um, in class is that we get in our head uh, notions about what it is we're drawing. Um, we talk about, you know, if you're drawing a tree, you have this idea in your head, I'm, I'm drawing a tree, and you have this, this sense of what that should look like, not based on what you're looking at, but based on what you've learned um, in childhood and beyond. So you, you might end up drawing this really childish looking drawing um, of a tree. But what you have to do when you're drawing and you're trying to draw something realistically is just telling yourself, I'm just drawing light and shadow. That's all I'm drawing. I'm drawing what I see. So that's why areas uh, like this um, that you can see over here on the photograph I don't really have any associations with what it is. It's just, to me, it's just value. I'm just trying to draw value. And if you start having that attitude, 
um, or that mindset um, when you're drawing something like a tree or something that you have a lot of associations with, your drawing will become infinitely better. You will suddenly be able to draw more realistically. So keep a check on that. Keep a check on, on how one side of your brain, um, probably the right side of your brain, uh, I forget which one is the creative side and which one is the other side, but one of the sides of your brain is going to be fighting you when you're drawing. That's, that's the, the big problem that people have. Um, so just remember um, to try to take that association out and, and be very objective and say, I'm just, I'm just drawing light and shadow. That's all I'm drawing. And I'm going to try to copy the light and shadow patterns that I see. All right, so then this, I think, needs to be blended right here a little bit. As I look in the, it kind of looks like a cloud over here to me. Um, and then if, if this isn't quite dark enough, I think there's kind of a line on this thing. And there's a line on this one. So what I'm going to do is I put a, a darker line here and know that I'm going to blend it out. All right, so I have a dark line there to define that part of the sheet, which is turning over. Um, I think that that doesn't quite do that. Maybe, maybe that. All right, and now what I'm going to do is take my blending stick, and I'm going to put it this point on that line. I'm just going to blend it out this way, and it, it's going to look much more natural because it's creating a gradation there. Remember, um, we get used to drawing line drawings, but this is um, when you're drawing full page charcoal drawing with value, it's really more of a uh, tonal kind of drawing. And what I want to do is, I still see that line, but I think I, I just want it a little bit darker here. So I'm going to just barely touching the paper with, with this so that it's easier to blend and it's not scratching into the paper. Just want it, want it to be a little darker here, and then I can continue to change it. Still feeling that line too harshly, but I might can revisit that. Um, it actually looks harsher on the photo than it does when I'm looking at it, which is you know on the video, which is strange. Um, all right, so we have light here, and it's not as bright as these areas there. Well, it's close. It's a little bit. Good. So I'm gonna just blend this up a little bit. And we have down in this area, if you look at the photograph, there is kind of this area of um, shadow. And And that shadow kind of comes up into, there is a, kind of a, this right here. You guys see that on the photo? And the shadow kind of comes up to that a little bit. light. So on this side over here there's some um, I see there's a value there's value change and here in this corner there's there's a bright light right here so I can pull that out. Mm -hmm. 
you know, and when it leaves a um, harsh lines, which it will, you can just go back in with your blender and just try to adjust it. Um, everybody develops their own little techniques that work for them. All right, now I'm going to go in and work on the value at, um, on this kind of um, semicircle looking thing. It's, um, it goes kind of like this. And there's some reflected light here. I'm just going to put in some charcoal on the side like that. Remember how to sharpen your pencil. Um, it's really unfortunate that um, I can't meet with you to help you with the, the razor blade method if that's if you're uncomfortable with that. Um, feel free to have a Zoom meeting with me because um, it can be a little intimidating holding a straight razor blade trying to cut your pencil. If you're using an X-Acto knife, just be careful not to cut yourself. Please. All right, so it's getting there. It needs to be blended. Also, I noticed that down here it's a little darker than here. All these little value changes start to jump out at you. That's why I tend to jump around on my drawings from place to place because every now and then I see something I didn't notice before that I want to fix. I want to blend that. Oh, that looks good. See how, how the blender really helps? Um, take something and make makes it look more natural. light area is a little bit wider. I'm just continue to the edge a little bit. So that's the thing about drawing that um, that, a lot, that you'll learn is you just there's no um, there's really no cramming for a drawing or like it's why I keep telling students to really try to stay on pace with the class because you if you rush these things uh, well you just really can't rush these things. It's a slow process, and it should be fun and relaxing. You should be able to, once you um, start to become comfortable with um, with the charcoal and the whole process of it, um, is you should become um, more comfortable with the fact. That, okay, um, drawing takes time. I can learn how to draw. I'm learn learning how to draw, and. Um, and I'm enjoying that journey. That's 
that's really that's really what I'd like for you all to do is to really enjoy your journey of learning how to draw. It's a little bit dark right here. Um, feels more um, I think the value pattern is more like that. And then there's some light. Mm -hmm. Put the white in the photo. I still feel like I've drawn, drawn this too harshly as compared to the photograph. And so what that means, if I'm seeing harsh lines, that just means I need some blending. It means that there's too much contrast. Little bit with the blender. Soften this with the blender. Over here in the photo, it, it almost kind of disappears. So I'm trying to replicate that to get a little bit softer. All right, so this is the other area I need to work on. I'm trying to figure out how many minutes I've been going. I don't want to bore you to death, but I just wanted to show you um, what I'm talking about when I say that this stage of the of the drawing is about refining, it's about using your blender, um, and, um, oh, I have a question. Good morning, Paolo. Um, so you say, uh, I find myself having a hard time not to have streaks when blending what could be a good solution. Okay. Um, so yeah, streaks happen when you're, when you're blending. So Paolo, um, the, your blender gets dirty on the ends, and so what happens is it also becomes a drawing, uh, something that you can use for uh, as a drawing implement because it, it puts down charcoal, right? So if I do this, um, I can get a streak of sorts. Um, but uh, Paolo, if are you blending with one of these blenders, or are you blending with a paper towel? Just let me know. Um, if you're blending with something dirty, it can put down streaks of, of um, charcoal. If you want to just blend something out um, without also depositing charcoal, you can also have a, a paper towel with you. Now, if I blended with this part of my paper towel, it's going to put down charcoal. But if I turn it over and find a relatively clean area, it's going to more blend. 
And the other thing about blending Palo is that the um, is the streaks um, can happen, and you have to just like I said when I when I say that drawing can be a, a push and pull. You have to you may have to go back in with your eraser and take out the streak that you don't want and blend again. But but the big uh, thing that you want to ask yourself before you start blending is is my is my blending implement clean or dirty? Um, if you need to, um, if, you're, if you're really careful that you don't want to put down any more charcoal, try to find a clean, um, a clean implement to blend with. Yes, all of the above. Okay, so Paolo, just remember, you'll, you'll start to get the sense of it. Um, when you are blending, you want to choose either a clean surface or um, an already dirty surface to use. Um, so I mean, you can try wiping these down if you want them to be cleaner, um, or you can just get a paper towel. Um, also, if you bought one of those uh, chamois or chamois cloths, those, um, those are almost like erasers. They, they take up charcoal. Um, and and they, they're the same way, they can get dirty and maybe they won't do that after they're dirty. Um, but just remember that blending is kind of a back and forth thing. So if I'm blending and I put down a streak I don't like, I'm going to have to get rid of it and then I'm going to have to go back again with something clean um, and get rid of it. Um, does that answer your question, Paolo? I hope so. Um, Let's see. The other thing with this process of starting with a page that is um, starting with a page that's already got charcoal on it is you really do kind of have to work to, to bring up the value. Um, sometimes at the very end, and here's the other thing that happens. You might have something um, that you think is just perfect and um, and then you'll be drawing, and then you'll look at it, and you'll be like covered in charcoal, and you've smudged your drawing. So the other thing you can do is get a piece of paper um, to put under your hand while you're drawing, and you can move your hand on the clean paper, but let the clean paper stay on the drawing um, and protect it. Um, so that's that's another another thing about smudges. So what a lot of artists do is, you know, they go ahead and try to put in their highlights. But they'll save it as the very last thing they do. They'll go back and try to pull out those highlights, being sure not to um, not to pull out uh, or not to smudge anything. And then um, you can also use at the end of your drawing. Um, there is a spray you can use, um, a finishing spray that will prevent any smudging. You also um, will also prevent you from changing it, but um, there's a workable fixative which you can use. It's kind of like a hairspray. Um, if you don't have the fixatives, but you do happen to have some hairspray, hair, hairspray really kind of works. You can use hairspray in your drawing as a final step. However, let me warn you, don't use this, the, the hairspray that's in a pump. Um, if it's aerosolized, you know, where you have the spray can type button on it, um, those are really old school. But if you have that, that works. Um, but the pumps will get your drawing too wet. Um, all right. So I think that's I think that's about it. I don't know if I'm done with this drawing yet. Um, I'm gonna just keep looking at it. That. That's also another reason why it's good not to rush. I think this area, I think I really need to, to go in and fix it um, because there's still some of the um, strangeness that was there um, by me adding something that didn't exist. And I just have to work it out. I just have to make it look believable at this point. And then I'm gonna go back and try to blend out any lines um, that are looking funky. Um, so, 
And then I'm going to go back and, and try to, at the very end, try to make sure any of these little highlights. Notice that because this is, this is one of the last things I'll say, notice that because this is a cylindrical form, I'm putting highlights on the light area, but if the ones in the dark area, what I did initially was I put them in there, and then I blended over them. Because they're, they're, so they should be there, but they shouldn't be as bright as these in the light. I hope that makes sense, and that gives that um, illusion of the light hitting here, um, and the fact that they're a little bit lighter on this side, you can see that they still exist, but you can see that they're also more in shadow than the ones on this side. So learning how to draw is quite, quite the process, right? Um, what I would just say again is just learn, um, allow yourself to enjoy the process. If you put too much pressure on yourself and you get too stressed out about it, um, then it's not fun anymore. I've, one thing I've noticed about my learning process with art is that I get so happy when, when I make any kind of progress. It just fills me with joy to see myself have just even the smallest step. So baby steps, right? Baby steps make me happy. And I think that's why I enjoy being an artist and I've been able to continue being an artist because I allow myself to have joy. I've had students, um, this is getting a little philosophical on you, but um, I've had students that just can't allow themselves to have any joy if their work isn't perfect. But remember, um, you know, that's why I keep hammering it in. This is like playing an instrument. Um, you know, it seems like people have a little bit more of realistic expectations about picking up an instrument that it's going to just take some time to, to get there. If you're playing trumpet, it's, you're going to sound like a, a, a sick cow when you first pick the thing up. Um, that's just the process. It's part of the process. So um, that's another reason why I, I really like um, on our critique page for you all to give each other um, praise. And, but also we want to help each other. And if you, if you have helpful hints, then you, know, you might say, um, you know, Professor Shockley, I think the wrinkles were good, but maybe they're a little bit too harsh. You might want to try um, you know, blending out some of the darker parts. Um, but they look great, right? That's the kind of thing that can help someone and can help foster this community feel that I like to have in our drawing classes. I feel like here maybe it could be a little darker. There's some reflected light in here, but then there's also a little bit more darkness over here. Um, so what I can do about that, I can just add very lightly, touching putting down tone by using the edge of this and not the point of it. And then I think that, that there's a little bit of darkness and then there's some light. So I'm going to try to put in a little darkness and then I'll go back with my eraser. Try to get rid of any of these harsh lines with the blender, and then I'm going to kind of reposition that light. And this one, this one is very bright in the picture. And then this wasn't really, I think this is something I added that's not really there. Um, so this line I might just take out. And there's some light in here, there's some dark in here. It's kind of hard to see what's going on. I added this line because I thought, well, Maybe I'll just make an extra roll in here. But that line might be there to stay. I might have to go in and really pull it out. I'll try my eraser here. And <clears throat> that's the other thing. Just be flexible with your drawing. I mean, if there's something that you absolutely can't correct, just try to make it look like it belongs there. Honestly, just try to make it look realistic if you feel like there's no way you can correct it.
because um, once you're apart from the picture, the drawing has to stand on its own, right? It becomes it becomes its own entity. Um, it's already looking better. So see this thing I made up. This doesn't belong there, but I still see part of the line. I'm not going to stress about it too much, but this pencil eraser, it'll definitely take it out. much better. Okay, but I do see that there's some reflected light in there that I want to put back in. Um, and that reflected light is up here. goes this way. And there's going to be a harsh line. That's what happens when you use your eraser. You can try to um, develop a technique that avoids that. See, I can blend with my eraser too, which is kind of cool. Um, So it's getting to be a little bit lighter. Here's another bit of advice that I, that I give students a lot of times. Um, if you're trying to pull out a highlight and you just can't, you just can't, you're like, Professor, I've pulled out as much of the charcoal as I can and my highlight just won't appear. Well, you have to also look at the area around the highlight. It's possible that the area around where you're trying to highlight needs to be a little darker. Um, and then suddenly your highlight will appear. Um, so you have to kind of think about pushing and pulling, adding and subtracting. Um, this, um, this area right here needs to be a little bit darker, and that, that goes into the, the area of reflected light that I'm trying to pull out. So I'm thinking maybe if I make this area darker, that that reflected light will be easier to show up. And I hope this is helping. Um, it's it's been a challenge to figure out how to teach drawing when you're not in the same room with someone. Um, so I hope this is helping, and I know it gets to to be a little bit boring to watch, but. What you can do is, um, you know, draw along with me. If you're, when you're drawing, if you want to just play me in the background, um, that's kind of what I do in class. I talk, talk while people are drawing, um, which is kind of would be kind of nice to replicate that. Oh, that looks better. Um, then on the other side of that reflected light is a little bit more. Of a, a dark. It kind of comes down like this, and it's just a little bit of something I'm going to put in, and then I'm going to blend it out. And it makes this area recede right here. It makes it kind of go back into, because I think that's what's actually happening, is it's, this area is back a little further, so it's got a deeper shadow on it. And I have to tell you guys, I don't, I know you're, most of you are a lot younger than me, but I start to feel like Bob Ross in these videos. Have you ever watched Bob Ross? If not, I highly recommend it.
Okay, now I think I got a little carried away with that, but I'm going to look. I'm going to make sure that that section of light that I wanted in there is still in there. It is, but it needs to be a little darker on this side. And there's this area of darkness here. And then there's another area of light. And down here. And it splits out. I'm to like this. I was, for a minute there last night, I was discouraged and I decided I just need to go to bed because I couldn't get the sheet right. I also see this little light thing coming up here. But if that is a cylinder, then just me putting in the light isn't going to do it, right? It's still flat. See that just flat line? Um, but if you look closely at the photograph where this intersects the egg, it's dark on this side. And then we'll have to, so I'll put that darkness in with this pencil lightly, and then I'll have to blend it so that it doesn't look unnatural. And then there's some on this side. See, this gives this area definition. Right now it has too much definition. Right, that's a little too harsh. So then what I'm going to need to do is come back in with a blender and make it look a little more natural by smudging it. And then what happens sometimes is when you go in with a blender, you cover up and you smudge, you cover up that beautiful light that you created. So you have to go back and do it again. Um, and this time, instead of using my pen eraser, I'm going to try using a, a really soft point with this because I think it'll leave less of a line than the, um, the blender does. Okay, and now I think overall that line is still a little bit brighter in my drawing than it is in the photo. So then what I'm going to do, it's it, I like the way it looks. It, it looks kind of similar to what's going on there. Um, it kind of connects to this area of light, which I might need to make a little bit lighter. Um, but what I'm going to do, since this feels a little too bright to me overall, I can just blend over the whole thing lightly and watch it, watch it kind of go back into the into the distance a little bit, and it, it, it did that. I think that's good. It's still there, but it's not as bright. What I just did with the blender is I, I lowered the contrast in that area, maybe a little too much. So, again, like I said, there's always this push and pull, and I'm not getting frustrated. I'm just um, observing. So then I'm going to pull out a little bit more very lightly. I'm barely touching my eraser to the paper. And I think that looks good. I'm going to leave that. I can even very gently go over it if I feel like there was a harsh line. Just barely lifting anything off. Okay, I'm feeling good. I'm feeling good about the drawing. Um, this line I think is a little bit harsher in my drawing than it is in the picture. So I can also just try to work on blending it out a little bit. But that's nitpicky to me. I don't really, at this point, I feel like it's looking better and better all the time. So leave yourself time for these tweaks. Not only are they important for your drawing, but I think that um, 
uh, this area. But see, I just keep noticing things as I go. This area is brighter, so I'm going to pull it, pull out some light right there. Um, and I forgot my little pea shadow. See in the um, in the picture right here near this edge, there's a shadow that looks a little bit like a pea. So I'm going to put that in. And it's a little bit darker than, it's a pretty dark shadow. It's kind of as dark as these, well, maybe not quite that dark, but almost as dark as the core shadows on the edge. So I'm just going to lay it in by, by putting my pencil on the side and putting in tone. I'm not putting in big scratchy lines. I'm trying to just put in tone. And it goes all the way off the paper. And in this case, it runs into this drape. So I'm going to... Ah! I didn't notice that. I put the drapes all the way off the paper, but they actually go behind this thing. So now I have to fix that. And I'm going to because um, I really want this to look like the picture. So just take your time with things. I know it's easy for me to say that because I know it, that we're all just hurting for time right now. I understand that. Um, but try to give yourself some time and if you enjoy the process of drawing and, and you can um, figure out how to give yourself a break so that you don't have too many um, expectations of yourself so that you can just allow yourself those baby steps. Put on some music when you draw. That might help. Watch a boring video by me. That might help. Um, all right, so now I have to get rid of these harsh lines that I had in, and I'm going to pull out a plastic eraser for that. Um, I have a big plastic eraser. I don't want to use up I don't want to use up my um, pen eraser too quickly. So you kind of understand what I mean now when I say be willing to make changes, be willing to correct mistakes. It's You get used to it, it's part of the process, um, and it's not as hard as it might seem to, to fix these things. So I'm going to put this line here, and then I'm going to blend it out. Connects to here, and blend that. Um, this part of the drape has got a little bit more shadow on it where this crosses over. If the videos are helping you, but they're, they're too boring, maybe try watching it in in segments. I was watching this guy um, do a, an amazing portrait drawing and it, the video is like two hours and it's really hard to get through it but it's if you watch it in sections it's really helpful. Watching someone make art is also very relaxing. That's why people like Bob Ross so much. Okay. It's looking better. There's a few lines in here. Um, this pea shadow. Uh, shaped like a pea. The letter P. And then it does, there's some shadow back here. And then this maybe has a little bit more light.
All right, I'm going to stop torturing you now. I think I think that you've got the point. Um, I just wanted you to um, see uh, some of the process of because I think I think a lot of times um, students look at at my drawings or they look at other students' drawings and, and they don't understand. You know, how did you get that? How did you get to that point? Uh, and I'm trying to just illustrate that for you. Um, so I think I'll take a, a poll or something and ask if you think these videos are helpful. Um, and it's, it's helpful to also look up on YouTube. Um, there are a lot of artists that do um, really helpful videos. One of them will be looking at him um, a lot, and I already have links to his videos. Um, oh gosh, now I'm blanking out on this name. Well, one is Proko. Proko does a kind, a certain kind of drawing that's called atelier drawing. So some of it's helpful, and some of it's a little bit too stylized. Um, but uh, there's Proko, and there's Alfonso Dunn. Alfonso Dunn, I think, is my favorite because he. Um, he really talks about this light and shadow a lot, about how um, you're capturing how, the, how light falls across an object, and that's our, that's our goal, and he, he talks about that a lot, and he talks about it in a way that totally makes sense. Um, so, Alfonso Dunn, that's A-L-P-H-O-N-S-O, and um, Proko, P-R-O-K-O. Both have helpful videos. There's also someone called the Virtual Instructor. Um, his drawings seem like they're kind of. He does a lot of landscapes, um, and he does some perspective. The Virtual Instructor. His are more. I just wonder if he makes drawings for real estate because he's really into drawing these very detailed trees and buildings. Um, that is a job that exists. Making drawings of property for real estate. Although I think it's really going digital these days. All right, that's it. I'm gonna gonna put you out of your misery. I hope you're enjoying this process of drawing. If not, and you have any kind of questions, please contact me. That's what I'm here for. We're all making the best of this uh, effective not being in the same room together. So. Um, the more you practice, the better you, you'll get. Um, you'll start to see value changes. Um, at first, you might be like, I don't see what she's seeing. But just keep working on it. Don't, as long as you're, you're continuing to draw, these things are going to pop out at you, and you will see them. And I just noticed I made this egg way too long. But I might just let it stay. All right. I 